Over the decades, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates would go from being allies to bitter rivals to something approaching a friendship of sorts. It's fair to say that Microsoft would not be where it is today without Apple and vice versa. This is the story of the love-hate relationship between Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. You're watching the Tech History Channel, revisiting the moments that shaped our present. At the time, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak had just founded Apple and were gearing up to release the Apple II following the success of the Apple I, which was a motherboard that needed other components to be connected to it for it to be useful. Jobs seeing this realized that the Apple II would have to have all its components put together and shipped as a complete computer that an average user could use straight out of the box. But they needed someone to write the software for the computer. Bill Gates and Paul Allen had founded Microsoft in the previous year and the company was writing software for the Altair 8800. The software, which was called Altair Basic, was marketed alongside the Altair 8800 as the preferred software interpreter. It was during this point that Jobs would meet Gates to discuss the possibility of him writing software for the Apple II, similar to what he had done with the Altair. Gates agreed to write software for the Apple II, which ended up being a massive success, making both companies Apple and Microsoft a lot of money in the process. At this stage, Gates and Jobs had a good working relationship. At some point during the Apple II project, Bill Gates had more people working on the Apple II at Microsoft than Jobs had at Apple. The next clip is a funny clip where software developers, including Bill Gates, were put on stage to pitch themselves as a potential date for Apple, or in other words, pitch themselves as Apple's preferred software developer. Welcome to the Macintosh software dating game. Software CEOs, could I please ask you to introduce yourselves? My name is Bill Gates. I'm chairman of Microsoft. And during 1984, Microsoft expects to get half of its revenues from Macintosh software. So software magnate number three. When, when was your first date with Macintosh? We've been working with the Mac uh, for almost two years now. Software CEO number three. Will Macintosh be the third industry standard? The Macintosh, of all the machines I've ever seen, is the only one that meets that standard. You can tell that at this point, the relationship between Gates and Jobs was odd and quirky, but still good. During the 70s, a little-known research lab called Xerox Park, which you made a video on, link in the top right corner, had invented something called the Graphical User Interface, or GUI for short. Steve Jobs was invited to the lab and instantly realized the potential of the GUI and wanted it to be built for the Lisa computer. So, Apple would begin to develop its own GUI that would ship with the Lisa computer. But again, Steve Jobs would need the help of Gates. At the time, Microsoft had become the largest third-party software company in the world and Jobs needed them to write an easy-to-use programming language called BASIC for the Lisa as well as a spreadsheet program and a word processing program. Gates agreed and requested Jobs to send him some prototypes of the Lisa computer as he could study the software and write the software Jobs requested. But what Bill Gates forgot to tell Steve Jobs was that Microsoft was working on its own operating system and had already signed a deal with IBM. Their operating system would be put on all IBM computers. Gates had already bought an OS called DOS which could run on IBM machines. But after playing around with the GUI of the Lisa, he realized that the OS he planned to sell IBM was years behind the Apple OS. So he instructed the team to build a brand new operating system that would be called Windows that would also feature its own GUI. When Jobs heard of Windows for the first time in 1983, just after the launch of the Apple Lisa, he was furious and accused Gates of stealing his OS, going as far as trying to sue him but Jobs had no credible argument because the original inventors of the GUI were Xerox and not Apple. So despite Jobs making Gates sign an NDA, it was not valid and it was at that point where the feud between Gates and Jobs truly began. Bill Gates later said in regards to the Xerox situation, Well Steve, I think it's more like we both had this rich neighbor named Xerox and I broke into his house to steal the TV set and found out that she had already stolen it. The Apple Lisa turned out to be a massive failure, only shipping 10,000 units that brought $100 million in revenue, which would not even cover the cost of development 
which was $150 million. This was a huge reason for Steve Jobs' subsequent firing from Apple in 1985. In 1985, Microsoft also launched their Windows operating system on all IBM computers, instantly making it an industry standard, as at the time, IBM was the most respected name in computing. To add to that, Bill Gates had negotiated a genius business deal with IBM that allowed him to sell the Windows software to other PC companies because IBM foolishly thought that all the money was to be made with the selling of the hardware and not the software when it came to PCs. They were incredibly wrong, and within a matter of years, Windows was the most popular operating system in the world, and Gates was amongst the richest people in the world. Jobs didn't like this, and frequently criticized Bill Gates and Microsoft while he was working on his new company called Next Computers, famously saying that if Next lost and Microsoft Windows won, you were going to enter computer dark age for about 20 years, meaning that they would just continue producing unimaginative software. In the mid-90s, Apple and Microsoft were very different companies. On one hand, Microsoft was constantly growing bigger and bigger, crushing competitors and becoming more profitable. While Apple, post-firing Steve Jobs, was a shell of its former self and was flirting with bankruptcy. It was at this point when it was decided that Steve Jobs would be brought back to Apple via an acquisition of Next Computers, the company had founded after leaving Apple. Around this time, Microsoft was facing an antitrust investigation. After it was alleged that Microsoft was engaging in monopolistic practices, with the most high-profile example being the ruthless manner in which it crushed Netscape, which was a web browser. Bill Gates, fearing that Microsoft would be found to be a monopoly, decided he would invest some money into Apple, and in an ironic twist of fate, he would help keep Apple afloat and build software for the OS to make it more competitive against Windows, as it was the only other major operating system still competing with Windows, and it could be used to show that Microsoft didn't have a monopoly on operating systems. In what was one of the last clashes between Jobs and Microsoft publicly, Jobs took the time to criticize Microsoft. You know, our friends up north spend over $5 billion a year on R&D, and yet these days all they seem to be able to do is try to copy Google and Apple. So I guess it's a good example of how money isn't everything. Shortly thereafter, Gates stepped down from the day-to-day -day involvement in running Microsoft in 2006 to focus on its foundation, putting an end to one of tech's greatest rivalries. Although Gates and Jobs may appear to hate each other, both men have a mutual respect for one another, with Gates quote saying, I'd give a lot to have Steve's taste, and Jobs saying, I admire him for the company he built, it's impressive and I enjoyed working with him, he's bright and actually has a good sense of humor. I think this clip of Steve Jobs talking about their history with Bill Gates perfectly summarizes their relationship. You know, I think of, I think of most things in life as either a Bob Dylan or a Beatles song. But there's that, that one line in that one Beatles song, uh, uh, you and I have memories longer than the road that stretches out ahead. And that's, that's clearly true here. Uh, well. I am often asked who of the tech titans do I think had the most impact on the tech industry. And I find this to be a very fascinating question because this is an unbiased video. For my personal view, check the comment section below to see my answer. I am also looking forward to reading some of your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching the Tech History Channel.